Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have a really tiny little Android box I want to show you guys. This is the MX9 Pro Mini. The CPU is a Rockchip 3328. The GPU is a Mali 450 MP. One gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabytes of storage, micro SD card slot, has Wi-Fi, BG, and N, but no five gigahertz. And it also has one USB 3.0 port and one USB 2.0 port. Here's the back side with the Ethernet, AV, HDMI, and the power in. Other side has a USB 3.0 port and a USB 2.0 port. There's nothing really special about this box except for the size. And I also got it as a gift for one of my buddies, so I figured I'd do a review on it while I have it here. Like most Android boxes, you get the remote, HDMI, and your power adapter. Let's test this thing out. All right, guys, so I've been messing around with this box for about two days now. It works great for 1080p playback. Some 4K stuff does work on it. Games are very sluggish. I can't even get Asphalt Extreme to launch. I have seen a video where this box does play Asphalt Extreme, but this is not marketed for gaming. This box does advertise 4K playback, but if you're trying to buy this for 4K playback on your expensive 4K television, forget about it. Go out and buy an NVIDIA Shield TV $199, it's the best Android TV box you can buy. With that said, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna check the specs out here. This is the MX9 Pro Mini, powered by a Rockchip RK3328, one gigabyte of RAM, and I do have a 128 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive plugged in right now. The CPU is a quad core at 1.5 gigahertz, 64 bit, the GPU is very low. It only does OpenGL 2.0. It's a Mali 450 MP. I'm not sure if it's an MP3, an MP4, an MP6. It's just a Mali 450 MP. It does run Android 7.1.1, and there is word that 7.1.2 is available, but I can't find a reliable download link. So I ran some benchmarks on this, and of course, this is a very cheap Android TV box. Benchmarks aren't that great, but this is a good cheap box for 1080p video playback. First up, 3D Mark. So I ran Ice Storm Extreme twice, and both times I scored a 2200. Very low score. Like I said at the beginning, this box is not meant for gaming. I would try to compare some scores, but every time I try to do anything else within 3D Mark, it crashes on me. Go ahead and get out of here. Next up, I ran an N22, and I ran this twice also. I'm actually surprised that it scored a 32,000. Pretty low score, but not bad for this cheap box. As you can see, the iPhone 7 Plus scores a 181,000. And we'll just keep going down. We're going to be way down here. I also ran a Geekbench, if I can find it. Geekbench 4. Single core score, 546. Multi-core score, 1474. Super low. So if we can put the benchmarks and gaming aside, this box does do pretty good at video playback. We'll start YouTube. It does use the Android TV version of YouTube, and I'm going to search a video of mine. This was recorded at 1080p 60fps. If I go to quality settings, we can only go to 720p, even though the Android box itself is set at 1080p and my monitor. So that's kind of a bummer that it only does YouTube at 720p, but it works good. And I mean, I guess I, it looks okay. So I'm gonna try out Cody here. This is Cody Krypton 17.3, and I do have Apollo installed. We'll go to TV shows real quick. And we'll check out something that I do own on DVD or Blu-ray. Seven twenty P. I'll just skip halfway through. It does stream the videos pretty well, but you're only going to get seven twenty P. 
kind of sucks, but it does work. We got him. We Netflix works. You're only going to get the phone version, so it'll be low quality. This box does come with KK Player. I believe this is a fork of Cody that allows Rock Chip to work a little better. I'm going to go in and play a video from a USB 3.0 drive. We're going to test 4K and 1080p. First up, Big Buck Bunny, 1080p, 60fps, MP4. Now it plays this pretty flawlessly, as you can see. Let's skip on through. Definitely running at 60 FPS. I can tell by the motion going on. Next up, same video, but 4K 30 FPS. And again, it does a really good job at playing this, but this is only at 30 FPS. The manufacturers of this rock chip CPU do not guarantee that it will play 60 FPS 4K, only 30. I'll skip halfway through again. It'll handle these pretty well. So we're just going to test it out. This is 60 FPS MP4 4K. And I'm just going to skip through. And I can actually tell that it's kind of laggy. Let me give you an idea here. I'm going to go to the very beginning. I shouldn't have skipped forward. But you can kind of see it stuttering here. So it's not going to handle your 4K 60 FPS needs. The Nvidia Shield will, though. Here we have 120 megabits per second, 4K UHD H264.mkv. So this is running from a USB 3.0 drive and it's handling it pretty good. I don't notice any stutter at all. Next up, 120 megabits per second, 4K UHD HEVC 10bit.mkv. And again, running from USB 3.0. And last one. 4K HEVC X265. This looks amazing. So that's it for video playback on this box. I mean, it's a decent box for the price. You get what you pay for. Gaming's not too great on it. If you want to do some emulation, I can guarantee you that Atari 800 minus Nintendo DS and N64, everything in between will probably work pretty good.
Final thoughts on this box? This is a great gift for a friend that doesn't have a smart TV. If you, they just want something for Netflix, maybe some Cody, some YouTube on their big screen TV out in the living room, awesome gift for them. I wouldn't buy this for myself to run on my 4K TV because it's going to lack in certain areas, but it will definitely get the job done in a pinch. If you guys do want to check these out, I'm going to leave Amazon links down below. This is not a sponsored video. I paid my own money for this box. I bought it for a buddy who doesn't have a smart TV, like I said. And that's exactly where it's going. Like always, thanks for watching.